Now, in the previous episode here at Ellis Island, I talked about talked about the different types of chalk marks, the legal activity that the Im- immigrants would have to go through. And today, on the final episode here, I'm talking about closing door to the U.S. open door immigration policy, and mainly Ellis Island's official end. The first few years of the 1900s, the U.S. government was under the, under the impression that the high watermark of immigration had already passed and that immigration into the U.S. should begin to slow. But by 1907, Ellis Island processed and welcomed over 1.2 million people. Now, ever since the beginning of the immigration boom in the 1880s, there was a resilient group of politicians and nativists who argued for more restrictions on immigration instead of the open door policy. A good example of this is the movie Gangs of New York. They have all these different types of pamphlets and literature that seem to be from anti-immigration groups as well as hate groups. Now, based upon the number of ethnic groups already living in the U.S., a series of new laws were passed and enacted as well as a literary test that immigrants would now have to pass. The new laws were the Chinese Exclusion Act, the Alien Contract Labor Law, and the introduction of a quota system, to just name a few. So new Americans were obviously happy to be in America, and as new Americans, the cost of living, though, was not cheap to where just about every member of the family would have to work in some capacity to contribute to putting food on the table. Now, when you think of America during the Industrial Revolution, obviously children were a big part of the workforce as well as as well as women. So obviously employment agencies became uh, kind of a boom in business. This says here in 1910, 81,000 of the 113,000 domestic servants in New York City were foreign born. It's a hell of a stat. old pictures of uh the east side here of here in new york and you just see the living conditions and it's just it's very cramped very tight quarters probably not the most sanitary conditions but just goes to show you know what what were their home countries like so this is an important fact that obviously with citizenship new americans can participate in 
our election process. You know, the right to vote, big factor for politicians with the ethnic vote. You know, with that majority, that percentage getting bigger and bigger every year. I also have to note that a good majority of troops, U.S. troops that went over to Europe to fight in World War One, were n- new Americans, were were immigrants not too not too far removed from that experience when they were inevitably fighting in World War One. This is really, really cool. When they were restoring Ellis Island to its original looks condition, they discovered graffiti columns. These columns have been cleaned to the original plaster surface, revealing inscriptions left by immigrants detained here. So I didn't even know this was a thing. You can just see from the top to the bottom are covered. And I mean, these are real people's handwriting you know there this is 1904 that is someone's handwriting from 1904 really cool Now, Ellis Island was still active for another 30 years, but was used in a multitude of ways. It began to be used as a detention center for enemy merchant seamen during World War II. Ellis Island's last official function was in November of 1954, when a detained Norwegian merchant seaman named Arne Peterson was released and Ellis Island officially closed. Now remember to smash that subscribe button, give the episode a like, as well as remember to tune in next week at the same time, same day, same channel, where season two here in New York City continues on. 